Wow, you guys. This is Aquatic Bob's here, tonight's video. I'm going to tell you guys why this is the best my tank has ever looked. I'm serious. I'm going to share with you. we're coming in hot here things are just looking good and I honestly this always happens and you'd think I'd have learned my lesson but first guys if you like these videos please subscribe give me a thumbs up leave a comment leave some video suggestions the hardest thing about YouTube is coming up with new content that you want to share with the world number one and number two stuff that I know that you guys will appreciate and enjoy and learn from so I appreciate all your suggestions and video ideas even if I don't do them I appreciate you taking the time to reach out and at least make a comment or suggest something uh, anyways going back to why this is the best my tank has ever looked one simple reason is consistency and leaving it alone. I'm consistently leaving it alone. I'm letting my equipment do its work. I'm letting my equipment do its job. And my, I'm not sticking my hands in there every day, moving stuff around. I'm not moving corals around. I'm not overfeeding. I'm not adding a bunch of extra stuff. I'm not... A bunch of stuff I'm I'm just letting the tank live doing what I need to do to keep it living but other than that I'm just letting this thing go I'm letting it, it do its thing um, and and what I mean by that is I'm feeding the fish once every other day right now just a little bit and for those of you who are interested in what I'm feeding I feed a combination of a couple of things. I'm feeding these PE flakes that Bulk Reef Supply accidentally sent me uh, in one of my orders, which was pretty cool. So I'm just feeding a little bit of that. I'm feeding Omega-1 Focus, Focus Marine Mini Pellets. I'm feeding the small marine pellets. I'm actually also feeding uh, super color pellets and <laughs> it's not actually super color pellets they're actually cichlid pellets that I put in this container because of my tank downstairs in the basement with a few cichlids in it and yeah so <laughs> for a little while I've been feeding cichlid pellets and nothing seems to be changing in a negative way so all the fish are healthy swimming around uh, you can tell that this guy is not fed as much as he normally is because he's actually eating some algae on the rocks right now. And my lights are very blue. It's very much towards the end of the day. I think my lights got about an hour and a half left in them, so they're really ramping down. I don't think there's any white left on right now. Um, but yeah, so my fish are healthy. They're doing great. My corals are healthy and they're doing great. And I've Literally, I don't think I've put my hand in the tank since I shipped out my last batch of coral. And that was, I think, about two and a half weeks ago. And I'm just noticing, I cleaned the glass today. I cleaned part of it yesterday, but I cleaned a lot more of it today. I'm just noticing, like, different colors that I'd, I'd never seen before. And I owe part of that to raising my nutrients and keeping my nutrients high which I think I'll do another video on that again soon because I, I think people just have a really hard time understanding balanced nutrients. Um, I know a lot of people are going to ask, so I'm just going to tell you. My nitrates have steadily been between 12 and 18 parts per million, and my phosphates are sometimes as low as 0 0.02 up to um, 0 0.06 parts per million. And that's, that's okay. I'd prefer to keep them around 0 0.05, but so I, I'm having a hard time with it. I just keep running less and less GFO on a slower and slower tumble in my reactor. 
still running carbon. Um, but yeah, so nutrients are a big thing. I'm not going to go into all the detail right now, but now you guys know. Look at this guy, just a camera hog. Just loves it. But now you guys know what my nutrients are at. Alkalinity, it's... I keep a little bit higher, mid nines. It fluctuates a little bit during the day and at night, of course. Uh, calcium is high, like 480. Magnesium, I have no idea. I haven't tested magnesium in months. Um, probably, I probably really should. So I'm sorry if that discourages you to check your magnesium, please. Yeah, I, I've just had this tank almost a year. I've been doing this for a while. But it's always good to check, and in fact, I'm going to check because I, I should. It's the right thing to do, uh, at least so I can know and monitor it and, and share that information with you guys. And, yeah, so salinity 1.026, temperatures about a solid 78.2 degrees. Um, I know some people like keeping it a little bit warmer. Some people like keeping it 77 uh, whatever you decide to set it with, set it and forget it, right? Like Bulk Reef Supply says, give it a th uh, about a half degree fluctuation uh, and let it swing a half degree. Even if it goes a degree or two degrees at night, if it gets really cold or something, that's all right. But as long as it's happening every day, uh, don't, don't try to mess with things or change things quickly. Um, and I think I covered most of most of my water parameters but yeah what it what it really comes down to is just letting your tank do its thing just taking a step back from all the control issues and frantically chasing numbers and trying to do everything and I know some of us we really do need to put our hands in the tank a lot and that's okay if, if you have to maybe you have a glove which can a long arm glove which can be helpful um, but really try to keep them out if you can. And this is just an example of, I mean, okay, look at the skirt of this OG bounce. It's just beautiful. Just beautiful. So, yeah, I, I hope you guys can learn with me on this one and we don't make the mistake of of overdoing it one of the most valuable pieces of information that somebody shared with me when i first got into the hobby was don't chase all the numbers don't chase water parameters don't try to you know instantly get everything in your tank to the optimal range that you want give your tank six months to a year to settle in a little bit right without making huge adjustments make minor adjustments as needed if needed but let your tank settle in let it do its thing with the equipment that you have and then once it's well established and settled in then if you want to start monkeying with stuff you'll know what you need to do say all your corals start turning green maybe you have an imbalance of of strontium or i i don't know some some weird element in your water but maybe all your coral are looking great and, and your pH is 7.7 .7 and your salinity is 1.022 and your temperature is 81 degrees and, but all your coral are looking great. Are you going to change something? Those aren't the greatest numbers. Are you going to change something? I don't think you need to, right? If your coral are doing good consistently and your fish are doing good, let your tank do its thing. Let it figure out its business. Right, All the ranges that we give for you guys and, and that have been given to us and that we share with each other and that we're told, like those are just optimal ranges that have good results in them. It's not the result, right? That's a good, good piece of advice. The salinity being at 1.025 to 026, that's, it's a good result. It's not the good result. Calcium, 450. Alkalinity, 8.8. .8. Those are good results. Not the good results, though. Not the only good results there are. So, pretty cool to just be reminded sometimes that 
every tank is different and and to be able to see that it's different and, and works that's really cool honey agrees do you agree honey who's barking who's barking no barking no It's kind of a rambling video too. I should start doing some rambling videos, but well guys, I appreciate you watching. As always, I am very thankful for each one of you. And I hope you're encouraged by my videos. I hope you learn something. And and really mostly I hope you just enjoy them and appreciate them and it's good for you. So thanks for watching guys. Aquatic Bob's out.